what, the growth, the spiritual and, you know, uh, uh, growth. You've expected this year and uh, you haven't met that goal. And maybe you regret a certain purchase this year. Oh, I shouldn't have bought that, you know. It was a total waste of money. You know, uh, all those things can be forgiven <laughs> because uh, the new year is coming. Amen? Hallelujah. A second chance, you know, as long as God allows. Uh, there's always a second chance, and we can always, you know, uh, amend those mistakes and regrets and tears and frustrations. But there's one thing that we cannot change. It is the fact that we cannot reclaim the lost time uh, that we spend in 2021. There is no way you can buy time, the past time. In fact, if uh, the most valuable thing in this world is life, time is life, right? Uh, so wasted time is the worst form of waste. Oh, that sounds pretty f- profound, right? I didn't say that. That was by Benjamin Franklin. He said, uh, if time be of all things the most precious, wasting time must be the greatest uh, prodigality, he says. As we look into the new year at this last time, in this last moments of this year, you know, we don't want to uh, make the mistakes. We, want, we don't want to waste uh, not just money, not just opportunities, but we don't want to waste our lives. We don't want to waste our time. And uh, we need to be motivated uh, because we know we are weak, we are sinful, not, not just by resolving to use time wisely. We, it's not that we're going to use time wisely. It's going to be the same you. You don't change that much, right? I don't change that much. It's going to be 2021 over again, 2022. We need to be motivated in order to save the time that God has given us. This evening, my, the title of my message is The Two Most Precious Gifts of God. And the two most precious gifts of God are, first of all, time or life, and secondly, our bodies. You know, we can't live our life without a body, right? So the most, two most precious gifts as we go into 2022 was probably our body and also our lives. How could we use our lives and our bodies uh, in the most worthwhile way? Not wasting our lives, but giving glory to God uh, with our lives. Isn't that the way we could honor God the most who has given, who is giving these two things to every one of us into the new year? The most God-honoring thing to do is to utilize our bodies and our time in the most, most worthwhile fashion. I want to preach from Paul's words. Why are the two New Year's gifts so precious? As we understand why these two gifts are so precious to us, hopefully you and I will be motivated to live a life that is worthy unto the Lord in the, near, in the new year, 2022. There are two gifts, and again, the first one is our body. And the reason our body is so important is this. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Can we say it together? Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe we could say, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let's say that one more time. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In uh, verse 19, it says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? within you, uh, whom you have from God. So saying that our bodies are a home to the Holy Spirit. And that's why what makes our bodies so important and so precious. We could say it like this. In other words, you and I, our body, my, our bodies are a rental home on, from our perspective rented out by the Holy Spirit. It is His body, and we get to live in it. So that's why Paul says, someday we will escape from this body, this tent, pitch tent, and we'll be with the Lord. Paul reminds us that we live in a rental, a borrowed home 
on this earth. Now, for us to not have the wrong idea about a rental home and the landlord and the uh, uh, leasee and, you know, there are some negative images attached, attached to that, Paul goes more extensively into what that means, that, we, that we are, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. It means that there is freedom. There is freedom, opportunity for us to use our bodies. Verse 12, let's go back to verse 12. We haven't read this, but... Uh, it's where this passage starts, in fact. Verse 12, it says, All things are lawful to me. Paul is saying, don't take me wrong. You can do whatever with your bodies. Although it's a rental body, it's a rental home by Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit, everything is lawful. There is freedom. You have freedom to enjoy your bodies and your life. That's what Paul is starting off. Paul wanted us to know that we have rights, we have choices, we have the freedom given by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? It meant for the Jews here in the 1 Corinthians, the Corinthian setting, that, you know, before the Jews had limitations in what they could do with their bodies. The first thing was they could not eat certain things. But Paul is saying those who are in Jesus Christ, they have the freedom to eat. Hallelujah. Look at this. Uh, in 13, it says, Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. Although God will get rid of all these things in eternity, it goes on saying. But, you know, food is there for us. We can enjoy the food, whatever food we want to eat. You know, back in the old days, in the Old Testament, did you know that uh, the Jewish people, the Israelite people, could not eat samgyapsal, you know, because they couldn't eat pork? Oh, what a wretched life that must have been, right? They couldn't eat uh, squid, ojingo, you know, no, no uh, you know, calamari <laughs> pasta, you know, no seafood pasta for them. It must have been very uh, wretched. But those who are in Jesus Christ have the freedom and the right to eat whatever they want. I bless and pray that all of you will enjoy all the delicious food, all the healthy food in 2022. Amen? Well, you're not hungry, right? <laughs> Uh, that's my prayer, that you will be healthy and you'll be able to digest uh, and actively eating and act actively being healthy with your bodies. But there's a catch. Of course there's a catch. Verse 12, let's read on, continue to read on what he says. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. He's saying, with freedom, there's also responsibility with our bodies. He especially talks about not just food, but he wants to talk about sexual immorality. He talks about that. In uh, verse uh, uh, 15, he says this, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of our Christ and make them members of a prostitute. Never. I'll read on. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. And for, so Paul's point is this. With our freedom of eating and enjoying our bodies, verse 18, Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. And then he gives us the command. Don't you know that our bodies are the temple to the Holy Spirit? Although we live in a rental house and we can do many things there, think about to my analogy, you can dine, you can eat, you can rest, you can enjoy, entertain yourself, and have guests. There are certain things that you can't do in a rental home. You cannot make big holes in, in, your, in your walls, right? You cannot repaint the, the uh, exterior or interior of your house to your liking. You can't do that. You can't uh, change the structure of your home to your rental home. And Paul is saying, actually the Holy Spirit is saying, do not give yourself to sexual immorality. Do not, do not uh, ruin yourself 
Don't attach yourself to sexual immorality. In the Greek word, uh, uh, sexual immorality, the Greek word is porneia. Sounds familiar? Pornography comes from that word, porneia. It means whoredom, means fornication, it means idolatry. In other words, in, in easier terms, sexual immorality in, for, in the Bible have, is having sexual relationship with somebody else other than your spouse, other than outside of marriage. Any sexual relationship is fornication and immorality. And Hebrews chapter 13, 4 is very ex, uh, uh, spl- uh, explicit on sexual immorality, what to do, what not to do. It says, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Sexual immorality not only uh, includes physical, sexual you know, um, intercourse with somebody other than your spouse, but it also entails spiritual and mental as well. Just like Jesus said, you know, who has, whoever has an adulterous thought in their heart has already committed adultery. We remember what Jesus said. And Paul, Holy Spirit is telling us that your bodies are a rental home and you should not, you should keep yourself from sexual immorality with your bodies. That is our responsibility. That is something that the, uh, the Lord honors as we refrain from this. As you and I remember that our bodies are a rental home of the Holy Spirit, that our bodies truly are, are, are holy, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, we can understand and we can really know that our bodies are precious to our Lord and to us. So the first point that Paul is trying to make is present our bodies holy to Christ. Can we say it together? Present my body holy to Christ. Present my body holy to Christ. It means practice holy eating, most of all. You know, eating is the most basic thing that, that we do for the entirety of our lives until we die. The day we're born and until we die, we, eating is the most important thing. And it says practice, it means to present our, our bodies holy to Christ means that we practice holy eating. We know that we can eat everything and anything that is edible, but not everything is edifying. It's not, not everything uh, 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 and, uh, gives you profit. And so we need to have a mind that our bodies are the Holy Spirit's temple and maintain it. We need wisdom on what to cut down on your eating and what to eat more, what to, how to exercise more and how to take care of our, our bodies by sleeping and resting. And that is all uh, done when we understand that our body is our rental body, that it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So let's practice. Let's practice holy eating. And secondly, as an application, let's practice holy love. Amen? Let's practice holy love within the marriage relationship. In other words, it means flee from sexual immorality. Back in June of this year, there was a couple that, um, you know, wanted to be married. And they were not Christians, but their parents were. And their parents wanted them to be married at a church. So they contacted uh, me uh, to wed them. And I had one condition. Oh, you're not Christians. You don't go to church. But if you want to be wed, you have to go through the Christian counseling, uh, the premarital counseling. And uh, I got to know them better through the times together. Although it was a time of pandemic, they didn't just want to live together. They wanted to properly get married and um, honor their parents in that way. And I really respected their heart. Their heart. Normally, young people, these generations, this age, if they like each other, they say love is love. And, you know, uh, they're met with before God. They just say these things and try to, um, you know... Um, to deceive God, deceive themselves, but these people wanted to be in a wedding marriage relationship and honor their parents and honor the Lord in that way. I remember blessing them and praying for them with such love and, and such a uh, heart for them that God would truly honor their, their hearts 
and they would live their lives worthy for the kingdom. And I pray for them to know Jesus Christ in their hearts. It was truly a uh, beautiful ceremony. Brothers and sisters, as we go into the new year, how can we uh, you know, uh, sanctify our bodies? It is by getting rid of the customs and your old habits of uh, these sexual immorality in your thoughts and your actions, if there were any. Because uh, extramarital and uh, these sexual relationships are detestable to the Lord and it grieves the Holy Spirit. As we remember that our bodies, my body belongs to the Holy Spirit. I am the temple of God. That will give us the motivation to present our bodies holy in our eating habits, holy in our life to our spouse. Present, let's present our bodies holy to Christ. Secondly, why do we need to? Why is our bodies, why is our life so precious, not only to us but to God? The second reason is this, our, life, our lives have been bought with the price. It is the fact that our lives are not only a home to the Holy Spirit, our bodies rather, but our lives have been bought, purchased with a price. Look with me in verse 20. For you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. The Apostle Paul explains to us the second gift of God. The first one was our bodies. The second one is our life. In other words, time, our life. It was the second gift. And the Bible, actually Paul, Holy Spirit, reminds you and me. We, don't, we already know this fact, but it's reminding us this fact that you, your life and my life were purchased with a price. It didn't come free. Of course, the analogy here, the purchase of, of life and stuff, is an analogy of a slave market. Back in those days, there were people being bought and sold as slaves, household slaves, or labor force. And Paul is using that analogy. You and I used to belong to a house called sin. We were slaves to sin. But we were purchased from that house with a price. And therefore, your life is so precious. That is what Paul is getting at. That is where he's getting at. Paul wants us to remember that the hope that we have right now, the, the hope that we have in Christ is through, was purchased with a price. It didn't come free. It wasn't just happenstance that came to us. It wasn't just a gift uh, that, that cost nothing to anybody. No, it was a, a precious and costly gift. The Apostle Peter explains this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, when he says this, knowing that you were ransomed, meaning you were paid, from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as gold or silver. Can gold or silver buy your life? No. No billion, no trillion dollars can buy your life. It was not bought with gold or silver, verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. It's saying, in other words, in easy terms, how much does our life cost? It cost the blood of Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus Christ. How much, whatever worth Jesus is, now you're worth that much because there was this great exchange of buying you out from the house of sin. Our lives have been bought with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? And because of that fact, your life and my life is so precious and valuable beyond all measures, into eternity. Our lives are not just lives that are thrown into the world like some existential, existentialists say. It, our lives are not just a, 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 a billions, odds of a billion, uh, a, a, a tremendous number. Uh, it is not by chance like the evolutionists say. No, it was intentionally and purposely and lovingly, lovingly bought and purchased by the love and the blood of Jesus Christ. Think about that. If somebody was, saw, had pity on you and loved you so much and they inherited you like a multi-million you know, dollar home, 
your lives will be pr- probably forever grateful for the rest of your life. In your bio- autobiography, you've mentioned that person by name. But compared to that, Jesus has bought you, has inherited you with his own life. The creator, Jesus, has purchased us with his own blood. And it is truly an overwhelming emotion, overwhelming love that Jesus had poured upon us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, you are so precious, every one of you, every one of you, every one of us is precious life. Our life is so precious. The life in 2022 has been bought through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? And let's live like that. Let's live as if our lives are worthy, worthwhile. Your life has been bought with a price, and therefore we cannot waste our life in 2022. And so Paul's application is this. So glorify God in your body. I want to rephrase it. Glorify God in your 2022 life. With your life, glorify God and not waste it. I read uh, John Piper, he mentioning, reading from Reader's Digest, the magazine of this couple who used to live in the Northeast and they did an early retirement He was 59, she was 51. So that's pretty early, right? In their 50s. And uh, they retired to Florida. And they bought a 30-feet yacht. And uh, to pass time, they played softball and collected seashells on the beach. And as uh, John Piper read that, he was very upset, in fact, because the title was, you know, The American Dream. Is this the American dream? Is this the dream that people ought to pursue? And he said, imagine someday them standing before the great white throne of Jesus Christ and they're giving their account to Jesus and they would say, look, the beautiful shell collections I have, Jesus. Is that the final, final fruit of your life? No. That is such a a, a tragedy to live a life just to live for a yacht or some seashells. That's not what it means by when, when Paul says, glorify God in your body. I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, what will you live for in 2022? I want to encourage you to present your lives worthy to Jesus Christ. Amen? Present your lives worthy to Christ. As I, uh, you know, been getting the letters this week from missionaries, I'm reminded of uh, a really uh, worthy life that uh, one of some of our missionaries that we sponsor are living. And uh, one of them, uh, two of them are Daniel Choi and Hyungmi Choi. You know, they are in Guatemala and uh, you know, it was on, only a couple of years back I, I got to understand something about them. You know, um, being well-educated and, you know, a lot of experience in, in teaching, he, Pastor Daniel, he's a seminary professor at one of the largest seminary, actually the largest seminary in Central America and also South, South America, Zeteca it's called. And he's, uh, you know, giving his best as the uh, academic dean over there. And also she, Hyung Mi Samonim, is a uh, school teacher. He's actually, actually the vice principal at the international school at, in Guatemala. So it's, it's a pre- prestigious school. And I did not know that they were pro bono. They were not getting paid whatsoever from either schools. And they had committed 20 years of their lives in Guatemala. And I, even this past week, reading their letter of how God has used them to serve the Guatemala leaders and the, the kids, the students, during even the pandemic time, it blessed me. And, and they're not getting paid for this. It's not for the money. It's not the, for the fame. Imagine if they worked here in the United States, you know. He went to persist persist school here and graduated. And he would have been a lot of recognized by a lot of seminaries. And she would have been, still been uh, teaching 
at the school and making money and living a rather comfortable life in worldly terms. But in God's eyes, their lives are worthwhile and precious because they lived for, they are living for the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'm not saying we can give glory to God only by doing mission work overseas. But whatever you are giving and doing for the Lord with Jesus, like we said on Sunday, whatever you're doing for Christ is honoring God and it is a worthy life. What will you give to Jesus in 2022? Whatever you, uh, your aim is, your goal is in the new year, I pray that in your work life that you would do it with Jesus, that you would do it for his glory. In your family life that you would do it with Jesus and for Jesus in your church life. I pray that you would not, uh, I fear, do it for uh, man's eyes, but do it because of your love for Jesus. Whatever is done in the name of Jesus Christ is done for the glory of God. So I pray for all of us and myself included that in the new year that we would glorify God with our lives. Amen? Every moment, every hour, every second of our lives. Let's pray that, God, would you use my, even my breath to glorify Jesus Christ because that is the sole thing, the purpose of my life. And at the end, that would have been, have been worthwhile, a life that has lived for your glory. And so, brothers and sisters, I pray and bless everyone online and in here and Cornerstone Church that we would present our bodies wholly to Christ and that we would present our lives uh, of worthy of Jesus Christ's blood. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer at this time as we close our, our message and close this year, in fact. Let's pray a prayer of repentance, first of all. I want us to pray for two things. First of all, let's pray for a prayer of re repentance. As we look back in the year 2021, are there regrets? Are there wasted time? Is there wasted life? That is, you think might be a sh a shameful before our Lord. Let us let go of those things and let us let Jesus know of our heart. Let's ask for forgiveness. Let's ask for a second chance that my body and my life would be lived out for His glory, for Jesus' glory. Let's pray a prayer of repentance at this time. Father God, we thank you in this last moment of the, new, of the past year. And as we look forward to the new year, I repent of the wasted life, of the wasted opportunities, of the wasted glory that was self-glorifying, that was given unto oneself, Father God. I present myself to you. I want to present myself wholly to Jesus Christ. I want to present it worthy to Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray that everything I do and say in the future glorify you, Father God. I am sorry. I let go of the tears and regrets and the disappointments that happened in the past year because God you're calling us to a new year and you want to still continue to be with us and use us and love us so Father God I let go of the sin I let go of the regrets I repent of the things that I've done that was self-glorifying that was that has been done to the body sexual sins and uh, immorality and Father God of all these wastefulness Father God Please forgive us. Forgive me from this sin. And help me to look for the future. Second, let's pray a prayer of commitment as we look forward to the new year, 2022. Let's pray that our, we will present our bodies to Jesus Christ, a life that is holy and a life that is worthy of the glory of Jesus Christ. Let's give ourselves to Christ at this time. For 2022 and let's ask for his motivation uh, to live the life that 
Jesus intended us to live. So let's pray for that uh, awesome life to glorify God with our bodies and our lives. Let's pray. Father, we pray once again and go to you that uh, would you take up my life? Would you take up my body to glorify your name, to sanctify, Father God, to sanctify and to glorify, to magnify your name, Father God. My life is uh, most well spent. It's worth, worthy of uh, the glory of God when it is done for the sake of Jesus Christ. Father God, help me not live for myself anymore, self-glorification, but to live for the glory of Jesus Christ, Father God. Also help me, Father, to live a holy body life, Father God, to give glory to you through my lips, through my eating habits, through my thoughts, through my actions, through the places I go, through the things I say, Father. Let all glory be gone to Jesus Christ, Father God. Let not a moment of my life be wasted in other things than exalting Christ in my life, Jesus Christ is exalted and that therefore lives are saved, eternal lives, including my life, is saved, Father God. So I pray that you would continue to work in amazing ways, Father God. Help me to give myself more freely to you for your cause and your kingdom to live with Christ, to live with Jesus every day because I have been purchased with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. Help me to live worthy of the life of Jesus Christ. Help me to live the life worthy of glorifying God through all that I say and I, I, I uh, do, Father, and I go, Father, and lift my life to you, that you would have your way, that you would have your glory through my life in 2022. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Paul's reminder through the Holy Spirit this evening as we close 2022. Father, we have repented of the sin of self-glorification And that only brought us regrets and it brought us a waste, a life that has been wasted. Father God, we thank you that you've given us faith this past year to look toward Jesus Christ and bear fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that you will continue to work in our lives to bear more spirit of of the Holy Spirit because my body, our bodies belong to the Holy Spirit. It is the temple of God. We 